Are you wondering how to get into Harvard Medical School? If so, this video is for you because I'm going to get into Harvard's admission statistics, required courses, and each area of their selection factors. So by the end of this video, you'll know what kind of competition you're up against and what you can do to improve your chances of acceptance at one of the most prestigious medical schools in the world. Hi, I'm Nadine Evans, an admissions associate at BMO Academic Consulting. Make sure you subscribe on whatever social media channel you're watching this from now so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. If you'd like us to help you get into medical school, click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. Let's get straight into admission statistics. So the overall success rate at Harvard Medical School is 2.4%. In-state is 4.01%, out-of-state is 2.34%, international success rate is 0.44%. The average accepted GPA is 3.9 and the average accepted MCAT score is 519. So what courses do you need to complete to get into Harvard Medical School? You'll need biology, one year with lab, chemistry, two years that covers inorganic, organic and biochemistry with lab, Physics, one year. The lab is not required, but it's strongly recommended. Mathematics, one year, which includes one semester of calculus and statistics, at, with biostatistics being preferred for the statistics portion of the course requirement. And you need writing, one year, and intensive courses are preferred. For recommended courses, there's literature, languages, the arts, humanities, social sciences. So this includes psychology, sociology, anthropology, and ethics. Now, in terms of tuition and debt, Harvard Medical School tuition, fees, and health insurance, in-state or out-of-state is the same at 70,745. Roughly 70% 70 of students receive financial aid and the average graduating debt at Harvard Medical School is 111,000, compared to the national average at public schools being 170,000 and the national average at private medical schools being 184,000. So Harvard graduates actually have a lot lower debt compared to the national average at either public or private schools. Harvard Medical School aims to review applicants holistically and they're very selective when sending interview and acceptance invitations. Desirable candidates will possess maturity, commitment to helping others, leadership skills, and the ability to work with others. And in addition, I want to go over the following factors that they use to evaluate applicants. So number one is your academic record, so your GPA and your MCAT score. Last year, Harvard Medical School had roughly 6,800 applicants competing for 950 interviews and 165 positions into its entering class. Of the 165 matriculants, 135 enrolled in the Pathways, 30 in the HST, and 14 in MD-PhD programs. Matriculants came from 74 different colleges across 33 states from seven countries. Overall, 24% of all matriculants are underrepresented in medicine, and roughly 70% possess science majors, though Harvard specifically states that they don't give preference to those with science backgrounds over those with other backgrounds. Harvard Medical School matriculants have extremely competitive grades and test scores. In order for you to be competitive, you need to have near-perfect statistics, ensuring that you meet or are very close to the statistics of matriculants that I mentioned. So what are you aiming for? Well, the average accepted MCAT score, as I mentioned before, is 519, with applicants scoring between 128 to 130 in each section. And the average GPA of accepted individuals is 3.9. So this is tough to achieve, but it's not impossible. Harvard will only consider applicants for admission a maximum of two times. So this is really important. This is not two times in a two year period. This is two times in an entire lifetime. So for this reason, you have to make sure that your first application will really count and you'll be seen as competitive the first time because you only have one attempt to reapply. If your GPA isn't competitive, work on improving it. If that means you have to retake courses or enroll in a post-bachelorette program, then do so. If you didn't score well on the MCAT, you'll also need to retake it. Now, keep in mind that 24% of all test takers retake the MCAT, likely to try and improve their scores. So you certainly won't be alone if you end up having to retake it to do the same. If you haven't taken the MCAT yet, make sure you begin preparing a study schedule at least six months in advance of your MCAT test date. 
In addition, it's important to devote time to mastering the really difficult car section where you need to score around 128 to be seen as competitive. The most important advice I can give you for the MCAT is to only take it when you're scoring consistently well. If you find that your scores are bouncing around between different practice tests, then you're not ready to take the MCAT. Lastly, if you've taken the MCAT but it was years ago, you'll need to retake it as Harvard only accepts scores within the last three years. The second selection factor that Harvard considers is applicant essays. Harvard places high importance on applicant essays in determining which applicants will be selected for both interview and admission. It's therefore essential that your medical school personal statement and medical school secondary essays are not just good, they actually have to be phenomenal. With no room for errors or average applications, it's a good idea to consult a professional medical school advisor to ensure that your application highlights the absolute best version of yourself. Unlike some medical schools, Harvard actually sends secondary applications to all applicants who apply, and these have to be sent back with a $100 filing fee. An important aspect of the Harvard application timeline is that the AMCAS deadline and the secondary application deadline are both in mid-October. So this means if you send in your primary application too late, you'll actually be unable to receive the secondary application and complete it before the deadline. So because of this, it's really important that you start working on your primary and secondary application right away. I wanna quickly read you Harvard's secondary application prompts so you can begin preparing your responses to them early on. The first one says, if you have already graduated briefly in 4,000 characters max, summarize your activity since graduation. The second one says, if there's an important aspect of your personal background or identity not addressed elsewhere in the application that you would like to share with the admissions committee, we invite you to do so here. Many applicants will not need to answer this question, but examples may include significant challenges in access to education, unusual socioeconomic factors, identification with a minority, culture, religion, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, or gender identity. Briefly explain how such factors have influenced your motivation for a career in medicine, and you have 4,000 characters maximum for this. Now the third one is an essay for applicants to the Harvard MIT Division of Health Sciences and Technology, which is the HST. So these instructions say, the HST MD program draws on the combined resources of Harvard and MIT to provide a distinct preclinical education tailored to preparing students for careers as physician scientists across the broad, across the full spectrum of disciplines, including biological, physical, and engineering sciences. HST classes are small, commonly include graduate students, and have an emphasis on quantitative and analytic approaches centered on understanding disease mechanisms and preparing students to solve unmet needs in medicine ranging from novel diagnostics and therapeutics to applications of big data and systems, and, and systems engineering as they relate to healthcare. Please focus on how your interests, experiences, and aspirations have prepared you for HST rather than identifying specific HST faculty or research opportunities. Limit your comments to the equivalent of one page of single space text with a font size of 10 or 12, and you have 4,000 characters to do this. So the third selection factor is letters of recommendation. So up to six letters of recommendation are allowed when applying to Harvard Medical School. At least two of the letters should be from students' professors in the sciences, and one letter should be written by a professor who is not in the sciences. Harvard wants to receive letters from all research supervisors for applicants to both the MD-PhD and the MD program. Applicants are allowed to exceed the six letter maximum if the additional letters are from research supervisors. The fourth selection factor is extracurriculars. Extracurriculars for medical school are essential for admission at any institution, and Harvard is no different. According to Massar, approximately 92% of Harvard matriculants have medical or clinical related community service and volunteer experience. 80% of Harvard matriculants have community service and volunteering experience not related to medicine. 82% have shadowing experience, and 98% have research and lab experience. So for this reason, to get into Harvard Medical School, you need to have experiences that stand out and can demonstrate the steps you've taken to solidify your decision to become a doctor. You must learn how to ask to shadow a doctor and you have to understand how many hours of shadowing are required for medical school as this hands-on clinical experience will be essential proof that you have put yourself in the shoes of a physician. To show your selflessness, you should have meaningful community and volunteer experiences and you must have research experience to demonstrate your curiosity for the unknown and dedication to understanding the mechanisms behind disease. 
All these experiences will be entered into the AMCAS Work and Activities section of your application, where your goal will be to prove not only that you want to be a doctor, but that you possess essential non-cognitive skills, maturity, and emotional intelligence to become the best doctor. Each of your experiences will help set you apart from other candidates, and just like a diversity essay, they will showcase what aspects of diversity you can bring to Harvard's medical school class. Harvard will be looking closely at your summer occupations as well to see whether or not your dedication for medicine is evident throughout your studies. If you've gained shadowing and research experience during your studies, but every summer you take off to hang out with friends, you're not going to convince the admissions committee that you're taking a career in medicine seriously and that you're preparing as best as you can. Overall, your life experiences need to show a pattern. Your desire, passion, and motivation towards pursuing medicine should be undeniable. Hopefully you have a better idea of how to get into Harvard Medical School now that you've watched this video. This will wrap up another one of these videos, so please subscribe, like, and leave a comment if you have any questions that I didn't cover. Are you thinking of applying to Harvard? Let me know in the comments section. Finally, if you'd like us to help you get into medical school, click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. Thanks again for watching, see you next time.